my favorite things about TF2 is its diverse set of weapons. Out of all the games I played, there's something magical about TF2's ability to give a single class multiple unique playstyles based upon the items you're using. It's pretty neat that Demo Man can trade off his usable grenade launcher with a pair of boots that enhances your abilities with a sword and shield. The problem that this occasionally creates, though, is that without having tried the boots out yourself, you wouldn't have known that they actually did that. Nowhere in this weapon's description does it mention that it completely replaces the grenade launcher, and even though it doesn't take an expert to realize that a grenade launcher and pair of boots would do different things, Valve's vague descriptions for unlockable items often confused me when I was new to the game, so I thought it would be interesting to talk about all the weapons that aren't done justice by what's written down in your inventory. So yes, the video's title is a bit overdramatic, but Valve does have some pretty bad habits that I want to cover, and a surprising amount of people tend to forget how incomplete some of the weapon stats can be. Let's start with the minor omissions, or stats that Valve forgot to write down that would probably be at least helpful to know about. The Force of Nature and Soda Popper reload their entire clip at once, which is thankfully something that is listed, but what's not listed is that reloading the clip wastes any loaded ammo that you didn't end up shooting. It's usually not a make or break stat for either of the weapons since it only has two ammo, but it can be important information in modes like MVM where increased clip sizes can easily waste a lot of ammo if you're not careful. The back burner has the hidden stat of no random crits, which I mean makes sense given the point of the weapon. This seems like such a basic one to forget though, so I'm not entirely sure why this isn't on here. The Eye Lander, in addition to granting you move speed and health with each head collected, also increases your shield bash damage, meaning that with five heads collected, the splendid screen can actually break the threshold for one-shotting light classes at max range. Again, this isn't essential to the weapon, but it would be nice to show newer players that they have that option, since it does affect how you might try to go about getting kills. The Short Circuit only deals 20% of its normal damage to buildings, similar to the Pomson and Cow Mangler. I don't know why you would be attacking buildings with the Short Circuit, because your primary and melee do that job better, but just in case you ever thought about trying this, I guess keep that in mind. The Flare Guns and the Gordbort weapons are another interesting case, because as it is, they don't explicitly mention that they function significantly differently than the weapons they're being compared to. Now, I don't think you need to give a paragraph of explanation for how every weapon that's different than stock functions, since it doesn't take a genius to realize that a trumpet and leather backpack are going to work differently than a 12-gauge shotgun, but for weapons like the Flare Gun that replace the normal hit-scan pellets with a projectile, I do think it would be nice to have a single line of gray text stating, fires an arcing flare instead of pellets, or something like that. Now, in the Righteous Bison and Pomson's defense, they do specifically refer to the thing that's being fired as a projectile, but they don't get a pass because they forgot about the 33% clip size penalty. Heck, even just explaining what an indivisible particle smasher is would help a lot because, like... <laughs> What even is an Indivisible Particle Smasher? I actually have no idea what that means. But this is where the excusable errors end, because some weapons have major defining traits that go completely unmentioned. For instance, newer players would assume the original and the rocket launcher are exactly the same, so the original doesn't list its centered projectile stat anywhere on the weapon. While a centered projectile doesn't affect damage or anything, it does significantly change stuff like rocket jumping, and it would be nice for newer players to have this information, since most learn rocket jumping with stock before they even realize the original is an alternative option. Similarly, the Holy Mackerel and Unarmed combat look like basic bat reskins at first glance, but upon trying them out yourself, you'll quickly realize that there's a pretty notable difference between them and stock. Even though it isn't supposed to affect your gameplay at all, both reskins track your hits in the kill feed, which only has a niche practical use, but it would still be a nice thing to know about. The hot hand misses a pretty big one too, since it works quite a bit differently than every other melee in the game, replacing each single melee hit with two quick half damage hits. This one actually confused me when it was first added, and at that point I had about 3,000 hours in the game, so either I'm stupid or this is really something that should be written down somewhere. The loose cannon is a very rare case of a stat being straight up wrong, claiming to have a plus 20% projectile speed bonus even though the actual projectile moves slower than stock due to air resistance. The loose cannon also technically has a 40% damage penalty on direct hits, but since that's the result of a stat that is listed on the weapons, I'll let that one slide. What I won't let slide is that the disciplinary action doesn't list its massive 70% increased melee range like what? That's the main reason that people would pick this over stock, so the fact that Valve doesn't acknowledge it anywhere is frankly inexcusable. Now, there are two more weapons that I haven't mentioned yet that are just absurd for a lot of reasons. Sometimes Valve just forgets to add basically all of the stats to a weapon, so what a weapon looks like it should do and what it actually does can be entirely different things. The shortstop, for instance, has a whopping five stats missing from the weapon, with two more listed in a way that has no existing precedent in the game. Just by looking at the shortstop in your inventory, it looks like a scattergun reskin that causes you to take more push force and has a smaller clip size in exchange for being able to shove people around. What this doesn't tell you is that it also shoots 60% 
percent fewer pellets, has a 40 percent faster firing speed, is 40 percent more accurate, deals a comparative double base damage to stock, and has modified damage fall off, meaning that the situations you'd want to use this in are way different than what the stats suggest. Even the backscatter has more things written down, and the backscatter is basically the same thing as stock with like three minor differences. Just for comparison, here's what the shortstop should look like next to what it currently does look like. I know it makes the weapon look like a wall of text, but you kind of need all of this information if you want to accurately show what it does. I would consider it bad game design that there's no information listed for what the shortstop is actually supposed to do, but hey, at least they remember to mention that this is Manco's latest in high attitude break action personal defense. The second weapon that's a complete mystery is the Huntsman. The Huntsman's listed stats are... Oh, no, nothing. Now yes, I understand that a bow and arrow is intuitively going to function at least somewhat differently than a sniper rifle, but it's not an excuse to tell us literally nothing about what the weapon does. The Sandwich does it, the Flying Guillotine does it, the Jurati does... Wait, no, the Jurati actually forgot to put anything too. So why doesn't the Huntsman do it? Now as a weapon that uses a different base, I don't think it's necessary to list out every little stat change from stock. There are just too many differences in how the weapon functions for you to reasonably fit all of that onto a single slide. But there are a couple stats that are genuinely important for people to know, such as the fact that it deals less max damage, has lower reserve ammo, becomes inaccurate after charging for a while, has the ability to be lit on fire, and even just, you know, shoots arrows instead of bullets. You could probably guess that it would do this since it is a bow and arrow, but arrows are functionally a lot different than bullets. They have travel time, they arc, they have damage fall off, they don't need to scope. These are things that significantly change how snipers played, and even if you don't want to cram all of that into the weapon stats, at least put something there. Oh wait, it does list that it reduces the chance of hunger by 13% if you equip the fruit shoot. What the fuck? Anyway, I've been ranting for a while, but overall Valve has gotten a lot better at writing descriptions. Most secondary weapons that were entirely different than stock used to be like the Huntsman and have absolutely nothing written down, so it's nice that they at least put something for most of them. A lot of important stats like swords having longer melee range, the Vaccinator giving crit immunity, the Hue along consuming more ammo, and the Airstrike dealing less self-damage used to be missing but were eventually patched into the game, so Valve at least used to care. I'll also give a special mentions to the stats that either are or weren't listed because they're probably unintentional, such as the Gordbort weapons having a slower reload speed, the Vitasaw having rounding issues with uber saving, the Iron Bomber having larger hit detection, and certain reskins of throwable weapons traveling slightly farther than the normal versions. The last two do still work in game, but the first two have been fixed for a while, so those aren't much more than a neat bit of trivia at this point. So anyway, that's most of the weapons that have stats that don't tell the full story. I'm sure experienced players know about most of these by now, but it's still fun to remind people how bad they are, and if you're new to the game, I could definitely imagine a lot of these tripping you up. I find this to be a pretty neat topic since it's pretty rare in video games for the developer to leave out crucial information about the items you're using, but hey, I guess that's Valve. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like. If you hated this video, the complaint office is open weekdays 10 to 3, and most importantly, have a good one. <laughs>